be. Just do that. The nice thing about breaking it up like this is you're never actually looking at a, a very large amount of HTML. It's kind of a little snippets here and there. Okay, so you click save and run. So we've got our hello world. We've got our button. Now here's something interesting. So this button, we can manage it inside of the text, but again, we're not getting the full benefit of using Apex. So let me show you something different that we can do. We can actually cut that out. And that was the button line. Um, and then what we can do is we can actually drag a button. And I don't remember what kind of button that was. Uh, I'm going to paste something in here. It's a button, primary, large. OK, so let me, let me pull that back out. So button, primary. And we'll drag that into just the first button area. And then we'll call it button learn more. Give it a name. Um, we've already got that it's iconic primary. We probably need to assign the button large class. And then We get we ha we actually have an action. We can say we'll redirect to redirect to a page in this application, and the page will be hello world two. So the same page basically. So when I click that button, it's just going to re re navigate me to the same page. We'll save that, run it. Oh forgot to set the uh, the label and actually learn more that looks a little strange um, but let's just make sure it does have so it's got button button primary I don't see button large on there And that should have been where we button LG, yeah. Okay, well, we'll cut that. And then we also want to set a custom attribute. We want this role equals button to be in there. I'll save that and run it. And if we inspect that, now we have roll equals button. I still don't get the button large. I'll have to, I may have to look into that, but uh, it looks about the right size. It may be that there is uh, some something different with the, uh, the class for that. In any case, uh, actually, let me see if I can do this. Class equals. See what that does. I think it was better before. Because now when we inspect, that's button, button primary, and then it's not setting the class. So let me take that out. And we'll leave it there. Um, there may be something to figure out um, on that, on the large button. OK, so where are we? We need to do, we're done with this Jumbotron, I believe. So that closes closes up right there. Div, div. So the next thing we need is a container. And we're going to do this whole, this whole thing. So let's add a container. And that is at this level, right? So we need a new region. We'll call it container. We could call it something else like uh, text. Or 
section container. And it's going to be of type div with a class of container and attributes is HTML. And then the next thing we need is inside of that container, we need three column medium fours. And so let me show you how we do those is we add subregion, 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 and then we drag them next to each other. And then we click on each one and we'll set a few things. So we'll call the first one section one. We'll give it a type div. And instead of giving it a specific class, we go over to the grid area and we say the column span is four. Do the next one, section two, div, column span four. And so the grid, the way that the grid is working, it's, it's based on a 12 column grid. And so what you really want is you want everything inside of this row to equal, whoop, don't change that, to equal uh, 12. And so that's four, four, and four, 12 or less, I guess. Now, the other thing I would need to do is set all of these to HTML. There is a way to do that as a default. Probably should have showed that at the beginning, um, but we won't go into that. It's all right, so now before we move on, I need to copy the text that goes into each one of these. Uh, grab that from here. I'm going to do the same text in each one, and then I'll just change it a little bit. So we'll copy the first one, and I can just paste it in there. Heading one, heading two, heading. Actually, let me clean that up a little bit. I, I don't want to leave it like that. Again, because we're working with little snippets, we can we can get get it cleaned up. And again, we're we've got some buttons here at the bottom. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and remove those, and we'll we'll do them just like we did the others. We'll save that, <clears throat> we'll run it. So now we have our headings it's looking pretty decent. Now we need the buttons. So these buttons, these view detail buttons, we'll need those. So let's go ahead and drag some buttons. Now those button types are button, button default, roll equals button. And when you click on them, they just go back to nothing. So we'll do the same thing. Let me copy this text here. So let's drag some just default buttons. One, two, three. Now this actually helps you control where where things reside. Um, we'll call this one button. Okay, and button template, just regular uh, default actually is what I should have picked. I think that was that one instead. Okay, and then the text or the la label should be that. And when we click on them, the behavior should be redirect to a page, and we'll just say page five, which is our page. Same thing here, redirect to a page. Page five, we'll get into buttons and actions and things like that in another video. 
There's a lot of options. So actually we click here and it actually goes back, click here. So there's actually some action taking place. And what's below that? Okay, so we have, let's inspect this because I can't tell. We have that, then we close our row, but still in our container is this HR and this footer. So what we can do is we can actually we can include, if we go to this regions area, we can include some static content right below. So there's a static content. We'll just say footer. We'll call it footer. Footer text. And I'll put the content in a little bit. Um, it does need to be I guess it is in a container. Let me copy this. This is just the footer text at the very bottom. It's You can see it's not inside its own div. It's in the original container. And so that's what we need is. So I'll copy that and I'll paste that into the text of it. And we'll say it's um, a span of 12. We just need to say that it needs to span 12. And we need to set the attributes to HTML. What did I do? Because that should have it should have moved out to a span of twelve. There we go. And that's looking pretty decent. Now. Is it the same though? That's the question because it's looking a little off. Maybe. I guess the uh, this is throwing it off. Um, what we can do is just to help it along. You'll notice that this nav bar is a nav bar, nav bar inverse, fixed top. Let's copy that. Let's change our nav bar. I'm I'm, I'm going to change it for the entire application, but that's fine because we want it to look like this one. So where is that nav bar? Well, the nav bar is actually in this global page. So it's showing up on every page. And so the global page is actually a special page that basically you define components and and they're defined for every page in the application. Now you can you can escape out. But um if we look here at our pages, there's a global page 0. We can click go to it and we click on Bootstrap. Um, actually, we have this region, and it's actually there's a template called TB Navigation Region. So even even though it's defined on the global page, it's actually defined in a template, a region template. So we can go to that. It's TB Navigation Region. Click on Edit Component. And so the definition for this is actually in here. And so what we can do is we could assign it directly in here, right here on these classes. We could say that it's an in navbar inverse. Um, but let me try actually putting it just on the global page. Uh, global page. Because of the fact that we're including this navbar region, we should be able to set the classes here. And then you can't run a global page. You have to actually run a real page. So we'll go back to Hello World and run that. And so now we've got this inverse navbar. And I'm not sure what this, where this is coming from, but we'll go ahead and leave it there. I think uh, we'll tackle navbars and and making sh maybe we'll finish this example up on an, on the next episode. Thanks for watching.